Hello everyone, I'm Charlie Dance of Capital Athletics and this is the Capital Men's Basketball Podcast. Joining me to my left is the head coach of the Capital Men's Basketball Program, head coach Damon Goodwin. Coach, I want to go back a few weeks ago, uh, tough loss against John Carroll, 87-59 to 59 was the final score against the Blue Streaks. They shot lights out from three, 14 from uh, beyond the arc, 48.3% uh, from three-point range and they had 11 players that scored at least uh, two points. Obviously a very frustrating loss. What did you take away from that game, and what was the message to your players as uh, you got ready for the next game and moved on? It was a bad day. Uh, we obviously did not play well. We didn't prepare well, and uh, we took that uh, uh, we have to get a lot better from that game, and we had a week off for finals, and I thought our guys did did absorb what we were coaching and talking about, and we came back against the High Northern and, and played pretty well. So uh, e even though it was a tough day a couple Saturdays ago, uh, we did learn from it. And it's a process, and uh, hopefully we don't let that happen again. After the loss to John Carroll, obviously finals took up a lot of your schedule. But once you got back to practicing, was it a little bit about getting back to the fundamentals, trying to build up the confidence a little bit, or, or what was the way that you went about? Well, we've been really inconsistent this year. One game we look good, the next game you know we don't look so good, and we're really working on that consistency. We're really working on. Uh, selling to these guys every day in practice. It happens every day in practice. You can't be good one day and not the next day. And to go out and earn that time by your effort in practice. And I thought we did that last week. Uh, uh, and it showed in the game on Saturday. And we have to continue to do that uh, this week in preparation for Mount Union. Let's talk about that game against Ohio Northern. 75-59 to win over the Polar Bears. You had nine players score six or more points. Uh, also, from three-point range, your team shot pretty well, 7 to 17 uh, from beyond the arc. Uh, the bench was spectacular, 46 to 11 in favor of your guys. Can you talk about uh, what went right for the offense in that game? Well, I thought it was our best game of the year. I thought it was a total team effort. You know, our, our starters, our stars really didn't have great games, but the guys coming off the bench picked them up. And, and uh, I just thought we were all there. We were all there mentally. We, we focused. Um, they made a run midway through the second, or beginning the second half. We didn't let it bother us. We came back and made our own run. And, and I just thought uh, uh, mentally and physically it was our best game of the year. And and uh, it was good to see. It was it's, it's very good to have, and hopefully we can continue that again, like I said, against Mountain Union and going this Christmas break with a, with more confidence and a, and a little streak going. In your very first game of the season, you didn't hit a single shot from three-point range. In this game, you, uh, as I said, you went 7 of 17. How far have your shooters come, particularly from that part of the court? Well, I'm not, I'm not sure that's one game. We're still not shooting a great percentage from three. That's certainly one of our, our deficiencies, and we're certainly working on that. I think it, it, a lot of it comes down with the type of shots we're taking. Uh, we're taking contested threes where we have to be a little more patient and take uncontested threes. And I thought that's what we did a lot better. It wasn't necessarily the guys that were shooting, just the pace of the game and, and the places where we were taking our threes were, were much more conducive to our offense. A couple of players that stood out in that win, Adam Blake, 10 points with seven assists, and Drew Fecko, he came off the bench with 11 points, hit a couple of uh, three-pointers. Can you talk about uh, how those guys yeah. performed against well, the Polar Bears? Adam really responded. You know, I challenged him as a senior and being our captain. He is our captain this year to uh, uh, become a lot better and become the leader that, that I envisioned and he really responded this past week. Uh, Drew Fecko was, was really good. Uh, he is one of our most athletic kids and when he plays that way he is tough to guard. Uh, with both though, again it goes back to that consistency standpoint. That needs to happen every day in practice. That needs to happen every game we play. And if we get that out of our, our guys, you know, we, we can have a good basketball team. Another guy that got to play in that game for the very first time this year, Josh Polner, transfer from Heidelberg, had six points, eight rebounds. For those not familiar with the transfer use, can you explain how you came into contact with Josh, brought him into the program, and uh, how he looked against Ohio Northern? Well, Josh played at Heidelberg for a year and a few games as a sophomore. Um, uh, the transfer rule in the OAC is 365 days from your last game, so we had to wait until that happened, and then he became eligible. So this was the first game that, that he played uh, for us. Um, end of last year, he contacted us. He's from Columbus originally. Uh, he had actually left school uh, uh, last December at, at Heidelberg and uh, was just looking for something else. We recruited him a couple years ago, so we had some familiarity with him. But he certainly came up big for us. Six points, eight rebounds is, is huge for us as far as a, a backup post player. And, and uh, more than that, he was active and he had a lot of energy, and I think that helped us as well. 
do you see uh, an increase in his minutes as uh, we uh, keep yeah, going? Yeah, up? I think he's going to be a big part of this. Uh, Dan Oki has been injured uh, somewhat this year. Um, he also got injured uh, at a high northern. Uh, I don't know how, how much he'll be able to play for us uh, against Mount Union. Uh, hopefully after a break he recovers and all that stuff. But I think Josh is certainly going to be in a rotation and be a part of what we do this year. So on to the next game. Coming up on Tuesday, you got a game at Mount Union. They're 4-2 overall, 3-0 in OAC play. This was the team that was picked to finish first mm -hmm. in the Ohio Athletic Conference. And I was looking at the stats. They got four guards who average 10 or more points. So obviously their strength is the backcourt. What stands out to you when you watch the film? Well, they shoot 42% from the from the three-point land as a team, and you cannot allow a team shoot that to shoot that well and expect to win games. They they average about nine, 10 threes made a game. Uh, we're going to do what we can to maybe cut that down to five or six, give ourselves a chance. And we have to guard the perimeter well, but we cannot give up uh, second shots, second opportunities. We have to box out well. And, and when a team shoots that many threes, there's a lot of long rebounds. And you just have to do a good job limiting uh, those teams to one, one shot per possession. Already you have gone up against teams that are strong from three-point range. Can you draw from those previous experiences and try to put a game plan together against Mountain Union? Well, quite honestly, I've, you know, we've been here for 20, 21 years now, and, and I think our preseason schedule is very difficult. We do it every year. Uh, we are not a fast-starting team. We, it's, it's been our uh, the way it's been here, and, and part of that is because of the teams that we play. I, I see a lot of value in going out and competing against the best teams we can possibly play in preparation for our conference play. Um, and I'm not sure all the other programs do it that way. So uh, I, I can just say that I, I believe that that helps us become better. I believe that that helps us uh, have a chance in the conference. And, and uh, we're four and five right now, but we've lost to good teams and we've played good teams. And I do believe that's going to help us down the road. I want to take the conversation away from basketball. Uh, now Christmas is coming up. The holiday sure. season is right around uh, the corner. Uh, what does that mean to you? Well, it, from a basketball standpoint, it means we get away from each other a little bit. They're, they're ready to get away from me, I'm sure, and, and I'm ready to have some time with my family and, and uh, relax. Although, from a coaching standpoint, you really don't relax. We're, we're going to be going to high school basketball games about every night of the week until 20, 23rd, 24th, 25th. Obviously, we're not going to go, but, uh, but we still have a lot of work to do. We're going to be in here doing that. Um, but it means a little time away, spend some time with the family. I have my youngest is a 14-year-old boy, and, and it's going to be nice to, to see him a little bit more than I have the past couple months. And uh, my older kids will be around as well, so I'm looking forward to it. Finally, uh, Coach, uh, the random question of the week. It has uh, obviously a Christmas theme. What is the most memorable Christmas gift that you've ever gotten, either as a child or even as an adult? Uh, probably a dog. You know, when I was young, I, I got a dog, uh, our family got a dog, and, and that's something that I, I will probably always remember, and, um, um, you know, had him for a long time. What was his name? Buffy. Yeah. What kind of dog was it? Dachshund. Ooh. A little Dachshund, so. Okay. Right. Very cool. Thanks, Thanks Coach. Thanks Thank for joining you. us. Thank you. That was Head Coach Damon Goodwin joining us on the latest edition of the Capital Men's Basketball Podcast. For Capital Athletics, I'm Charlie Danis. We'll see you next time.